Hey guys, I'm Brad Riley from Aerocharger Turbos. Um, today we're going to talk about the air to snow intercooler. Been a little bit of a buzz about it uh, from last year to this year. Uh, parts are in stock. Uh, we are shipping them. This is the 800 sled we're going to actually turn into the mod sled for Carl Kuster to run at Jackson this year. Um, he's getting the exact same uh, intercooler setup uh, and system that's available to the consumers. This is the air box. Um, this, is, this is a neat piece. Uh, we worked really hard on this, and it's, it's turning out to be very effective. But uh, basically, throttle bodies go into here. We've got our additional injectors here, fuel rail. All of this will basically come installed. If it's an upgrade, you can, you can pull your components off of your old system. They bolt right onto here. Um, air inlet, it's a two and a half inch inlet. Um, the air gets distributed here, comes down, goes through our core into the end tank. And the idea of, uh, of this system is whenever you see sleds doing wheelies, you've got that high velocity air coming out of the front of the tunnel that has snow and, and water, and it's extremely turbulent underneath there. That's what we're using to cool your charge temperature. Snowmobiles are an odd application. You, there's times you've got full power, full boost, you're making a lot of heat, but you don't have the ground speed to push air across an air-to-air -air intercooler. They've got sensitive cooling systems on them. We don't want to add additional heat there. They've got sensitive electronic systems that we don't want to drive an extra pump or an extra fan to try to get things to work. So anytime we're making track speed, uh, anytime you're at power, you're making track speed, we've got a means to cool the charge. So we think this is the perfect system, uh, at least in, in this specific application. Today we will be cutting a hole in the tunnel. Um, this is a little bit of a controversial subject with some people. Um, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. We're not just going to blindly cut a hole and forget about the structural integrity. So what we've got here is a stainless steel frame. Uh, this will actually rivet in place. There's not much weight here, but there's a lot of strength because it's a boxed in uh, construction. Uh, this will more than replace the structural integrity of the tunnel. Uh, the other thing this does is provides us protection for the leading edge of our core as it sticks down in the tunnel. This protects against rocks and sticks and the track touch in it. Uh, in the case of this sled, we'll have screws on the track. This will make sure that should that track come up, it can't get to the aluminum core. We're going to cut straight to basically uh, without a tank on there. I do like to do it without a tank. It gives us a little better access. Tanks are easy to remove. You could do it without removing the tank, but today we're going to show you without the tank on. Let's talk about uh, site preparation. Uh, as you can see, we've got the whole back end of the, uh, the sled pulled off. We've got the throttle bodies, we've got tape over them. Uh, we're gonna make some, uh, a little bit of a mess here, um, cutting this aluminum. So real important to keep these uh, closed off. Uh, one trick over here is we've got a, a zip tie there. Go ahead and clip this zip tie off. And what that allows us to do is to go ahead and untuck this line and put the line on top. This gives us a little bit more freedom uh, back in here to work. Uh, another thing that uh, we can do is go ahead and, and peel off this, this rubber here. We'll also peel this rubber back off and the next step is we'll put our template on and begin to mark our hole. Now that we've got our template cut out, there's a few things here to note. This is going to sit in here about like this, but we've got a, a line here, and this is to line up with the main rivet uh, that supports the center of the heat exchanger. And then this line here will line up with basically the center of the radius on this side of the heat exchanger. And I'll butt up against this side, that goes there, that goes there. And that's the, the location. One little trick I like to do is I take a little spray adhesive, I'll spray the back of this template, I'll stick it on there. All right, now that we've got our template stuck down, um, just to give you an idea how I like to go about things, I usually drill out the corners. Uh, I'll use a saw, saws all jigsaw. Um, abrasive wheel. Whatever you've got access to, whatever you're comfortable using, uh, you should use. I've also moved the throttle bodies up, give me a little more room to work in here, knowing I've also got to come in here and put some rivets in place. But at this point, 
proceed with caution. You've got a track underneath there. And uh, remember, you can always come back and trim a little more out if you need to uh, later on. Now that we've got the hole roughed out, uh, I always like to do the best job we can as far as managing some of the, the salt, you know, the drill bit pieces, and, and I've already vacuumed that a little bit, but uh, we'll go in here and we'll go ahead and, and, and rough fit our frame. Frame fits in there. And you'll notice, uh, we've seen this a couple of times, uh, you'll have a, a bump on the intercooler. It's where the weld basically was built up. You'll want to go ahead and, and file off uh, any irregular bumps that you have in the front of the cooler so that our frame can sit as far back and flat as possible. Now that I've got the frame located in here, I've dropped my bolt in just for placement. Um, you know, be careful when you're drilling this rivet out not to wallow that hole out. I've dropped my bolt in here. I've got my uh, frame fixtured in here with some C-clamps. And at this point, all I need to do is come in here, finish drilling through the rivet locations, and I will install my 3 inch rivets. And uh, I'll show you the next step. Now that we've got the box mounted in there with the rivets, this is our opportunity to come in here and, and trim a little bit that uh, maybe the hole wasn't large enough. Uh, I've got to trim a little bit right here. Uh, again, when we, when we went to cut this out, we, we shied on the small side, and, and now I'm going to come in here. It's going to be very simple because I'm cutting against a stainless steel edge. No big deal. We'll get this, uh, we'll get this cut out and move to the, uh, the next step. Now that we've got our box cleaned up, we've got nice smooth edges and ready to drop our box in, I'm going to go ahead and take some silicone sealant and seal around any of the gaps that we have, uh, both on the outside of the box, and I'll even go ahead and do the inside. Once we get our air box and intercooler in here, I will again go around this outside and silicone the two sides and the front to ensure that all the pressure and snow in this tunnel has to come up through the core. At this point, we'll go ahead and, and remove our tape and go for final assembly of the airbox. This airbox and intercooler is designed to take up absolutely as much space as we possibly could. If we'd have made it smaller, it'd be easier to install. But at the end of the day, we only have to install it once, but we get to enjoy the performance for years to come. A couple of tricks just prior to assembly would be go ahead and put some silicone on this O-ring. I'll put it on this surface here. and. Uh, I also like to loosen up the uh, screws on top of the throttle bodies. That gives them a little bit of play as they're fitting into the airbox. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and install it. I've put my hoses back so that they are uh, in their proper position. Um, first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to lift the throttle bodies up. We'll try to hook the bottom of the box in there. We'll put the back of the box in. We'll push the whole assembly down, and it will close the box on top of the throttle bodies. First, we kind of align the box inside of the frame. We can pull up on it at that point. We hook the throttle bodies, push the bottom of the airbox in, the back goes down, push forward on the airbox, and we're in. We've got good proper clearance over here for the hoses. And when you get the fuel tank on here, the fuel tank will come on here, slightly touching it, and the whole system is installed properly. Go ahead and put a, a bead of silicone here, a bead of silicone on the other side. You can get some in the front uh, to help out with uh, sealing up there, and uh, we're ready. 
Now that we've got the air box installed, you can uh, get a better idea of how it kind of works, but uh, underneath the tunnel we've got the paddles that are shoving air and snow and water, and uh, they can come up and, and come through our heat exchanger here. Um, you know, this is, this is something that uh, you know, a couple of times a year we get to work on some neat stuff. This is a very uh, industry specific, very application specific answer. Um, it's working phenomenal. We're having the, the success we were looking for. And uh, we hope that you, uh, you enjoyed as much as we had fun designing for you.